Example three of section 7.3 says, use the shell method to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs. Y equals X squared plus one, Y equals zero, X equals zero, and X equals one about the X axes. So let's see what all of that looks like. Now they don't tell me, well, there's only one function there. Oh, and they do tell me the bounds. So let's see this here. So when I plug in zero, I will get one. And when I plug in one, I'll get two. And it is a squared function positive, so it should open up this way. Okay, so I have a line y equal to zero. That's this x axis, actually. We have the line x equals to zero, which is actually y axis. And we have the line x equal to one. Okay, so the only region bounded by all four of these is this section right in here. I am revolving about the y-axis, so I am actually revolving in this direction, which means I have a vertical line of revolution. And if I'm using shell method, I need to use a parallel rectangle, which means my rectangles should also be vertical. So let's see. We have volume equals 2 pi. My x values are from 0 to 1. My height is just this function here. And my row, the little p looking thing, um, is going to be right minus left. Remember, height is top and bottom, so row has to be right and left. So the right is the region and the value of the line of revolution is zero. So we get two pi x cubed plus x, x to the fourth over four, x squared over two, evaluated from zero to one, one fourth plus one half minus a big fat zero. So we basically get three fourths. And if you reduce the two and the four, you get three pi over two as your volume. Okay, so let's move on to example four. Again, it says use the show method to find the volume of a solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of y equals x plus one, y equals zero, x equals zero, and x equals one, about the x axis. So let's see what that looks like. So here's one, here's zero. Um, there's the line x plus 1, here's the line y equals 0, here's the line x equals 0, and here's the line x equals to 1. So the this is the area that we're talking about here. Now, notice that it's a trapezoid, and if I wanted, I could probably find the area or the volume using a, um, well, no, not even then. It's going to kind of create like a pyramid, but without the top. Um, so you can't use one of your geometric formulas. So let's see here. We have, we're revolving about the x-axis, which means we're revolving this way. So that means our line of revolution is horizontal, which 
means if I have to use shell method, then my rectangles should also be horizontal. Which means I need to integrate with respect to y. So we have the volume equals 2 pi. The lowest y value is 0. The highest y value is actually 2. Then we have the height, which is this function right here, which is 1. That's a little interesting, right? And then we have um, rho of x. And rho of x, oh, this is going to be interesting. We actually cannot go from 0 to 2. Because notice that here, the height is 1. But what happens if I draw a rectangle here? Notice that the height is not just one, it's different, okay? So I'm actually gonna cut this image in half. Well, not necessarily in half as far as area is concerned, but as far as the width, entire width. So we're not gonna go from zero to two. We're just gonna go from zero to one, and then we'll talk about what's happening from one to two in a minute, okay? But for this bottom little rectangle piece, we are going to use the shell method and set it up. So the height here is one, and the row of y would be the top minus the bottom. So the region minus the line of revolution's value is zero. Plus two pi from one to two, and now this height, well this height is, remember, this is um, this height here. So if you're looking at this, it's going to be 1 minus this value here. And depending on where you are, you're going to be at a different value. So it's this function that we have to use, x plus 1. And then I still have to do, and I shouldn't be using x plus 1. I have to actually put a function in terms of y. So, ooh, so we have a little bit of mess we got to clean up here. So you have y equals x plus 1. Well, if I minus 1 on both sides, I get y minus 1 equals x. So this is the function that represents this in terms of y. So I have to write y minus 1. Now, rho is going to be the same thing. The top region minus the line of revolution. So this time, though, the top region is going to be y, still, minus 0. And then, of course, I have to have a dy next to it. I kind of wrote a little bit too big. So let's clean that up a little bit. Here it's just going to be the integral of y dy, and here we're going to have, um, this is going to turn negative, this is going to turn positive, which means I'll have 2y, or I'm sorry, 2 minus y times y. And if I distribute this y, I can actually just write 2y minus y squared. Okay, now let's integrate. I get y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. I get y squared. It would be 2y squared over 2, but the 2's would cancel minus y cubed over 3 evaluated from 1 to 2. So we get 2 pi times 1 half minus 0 plus 2 pi times 4 minus 8 thirds minus 1 minus 1 third. These twos would cancel. I'd have pi plus 2 pi times 
that would be plus, so let's see, 4 minus 8, 8 over 3, minus 1, plus 1 over 3. I get 2 over 3. So this is pi plus 4 pi over 3, which equals 7 pi over 3 altogether. So that should be the volume of this entire region. But notice you did have to split it up. Now just FYI, had I not been told to do the show method, this problem would have been a lot easier if I integrated with respect to X. Because notice, if you put a vertical rectangle here, you don't have to do two different parts because the vertical rectangle would be the same. It would always be this height, this line, no matter where you were, whether your rectangle was here, or your rectangle was there, or it was in the middle. And so then you wouldn't have to split the integral into two pieces, okay? So some instances it's easier to use disk or washer, and then some instances it's easier to use shell method. All depends on the problem and what you're revolving around.